Hey, Abby of Pottery, video two, part two of the lidded vessel thrown in one piece. Cut it open. Listen to uh, listen to the prison radio while I'm at it. Primo Mia. The politics of performance. What can be more frustrating than observing what politicians do or say? Like soap operas, we often see them giving a performance, in essence, acting, and saying things that they really don't believe. This is especially so in this era of social media and when cable channels provide access to special, isolated audiences. It may be true that we see and hear them, but in truth, they are strangers to us. They are often motivated by money, donated by those special audience energy, but more often by fear, seen with remarkable clarity by the case of former U.S. President Donald Trump and his menacing minions. Trump may not effectively get people elected, but he can drive someone out from a primary election. For fear of him, politicians bow and scrape and beg. Like peasants before their lords, they serve their political masters as if their political lives depended on his favor. They offer a false yet false sounding praise of him while sniggering behind his back. Where has performance been so servile? And as their affections are false, so too are their hatreds, which are but more performances played with bare teeth. Yet, as Alexis de Tocqueville noted over almost 200 years ago, when it comes to political parties, their antipathy is all too real. De Tocqueville, who visited America in the 1830s, wrote as follows, the parties by which the union is menaced do not rest upon abstract principles but upon temporal interests. These interests, disseminated in the provinces of so vast an empire, may be said to constitute rival nations rather than parties. Alexis de Tocqueville, Democracy in America. With love, not fear. This is Mumia Abu Jamal. Pam Africa health update on Mumia is the name of this episode from February 20th. My name is Joelle Hammerhand. I'm a lawyer and a private investigator. I work with Prison Radio, and I'm here with Pam Africa from the International Concerned Family and Friends of Mumia Abu Jamal. Pam, what's the latest? Right. Um, Last week, I had a phone call that came in from Wadia Jamal's oldest son, and he had just left from visiting Mobile, and he was really upset. In fact, he said he left there crying, going down the hall. When he got to his car, he said he was so messed up when he turned his car on, he had to stop because he was crying uncontrollably. And uh, because Mobile, Look just that bad. Mm. And, uh, his hair that came out, but the most important thing it wasn't the fact that when your hair was gone, and uh, it was the rash. And uh, he had this black rash that started on his face. And uh, he had seen that when he had scratched so much that his eyebrows, you know, um, half of them was gone. And that when he was continuously. 24 7 he had a terrible itch there and it was very alarming for me so i contacted 
interview several of the people that work that work around the Let's do this. and uh, make arrangements to go up to the prison you know last Monday, I mean this Monday just passed. And I was shocked when I saw him on there. You know, he was thin, he was much he had lost a lot of weight. And when he talked about the rash, it brought back to my mind when we were fighting and all this government you know, stopped them from murdering wounded through medical neglect. As I sat here, you know, watching the media, and I'm thinking about when you hear the media on his platform with Mark Lamont Hill, you would have no idea you could not place the face, you know, the face of the media, the body of the media, was what you're hearing on the radio because you're thinking that, you know, he's well. Mm -hmm. This government is slowly, purposely killing the media through medical neglect. I'm talking about this guy, if you will, we can talk more about, and on the fact that he does not get proper yarn out, he has a bad heart, and they're not giving him the proper doubt to stop the things that he needs to survive. And most of all, I want you to understand, this should happen to no one, but Mooney is 100%
about the work that they were going to do. And I see what the general population and our teacher doing with his yes do. And now you know that he wants to burn in hell. And you know, he's still talking about it in the same place. Um, you know, and that's when many started getting sick. Many had been in jail for over 30 years at that point. And you know, he had paid and things like that. But once he hit general population, when they found out that um, he was get sick, that he was just in general population, you know, that's when his sickness started. And then when he went down uh, when that happened in the right corner, or that's when they stepped up, and I'll go more into detail about that later, you know, but they are determined to kill him later. We must stop what he's doing. We couldn't do nothing about it now because we didn't know the plot. We didn't know the plan. We could not do anything about Sheriff Cabrera because the same thing. And our Martin Luther King, what we do know and what we can do, what is going on here. It is time for us to rise up and tell him, hell no. Okay, this is Noelle Hammerham. It's February 9th. I really want you to stay tuned for updates and action alerts. Uh, Noelle Hammerham, Prison Radio, is speaking with Pam Africa from the International Concerned Family and Friends of Mumia Abu Jamal. Look on Instagram, look on Facebook, um, do your research and get involved. Yes. Beach commentaries are recorded by Prison Radio. Free Mumia. Oh my God. Pray for this woman. This episode called Occupations Wake, January 29th. Occupations Wake. As we examine, study, and analyze the events in Gaza in Israel today, we learned of the lengths taken by the occupation as it dominates the landscapes of Gaza in the Palestinian territory. Occupation is a polite way of speaking of what is, in fact, the siege and taking of another people's land by military means. Cameroonian philosophers of Chilean Benzik, in his remarkable book, Necropolitan, Write keenly and deeply of the Israeli Palestinian conflict and provide dazzling insight into the origins and drives and operates beneath the roof of consciousness. First and foremost, in Bimbi explains, we find separation. This is followed by the creation of an enclave or separate space, and then the destruction of those deeds of the state. This separation instinct, many tell us, is a master design to dominate and bother, who then faces subjugation, which leads further to a desire to destroy. It then relates, telling us that, and this is a quote, occupation is in every respect hand-to-hand combat. In a tunnel. Please note that his book was published initially in French in 2016. Mm-hmm. In every writes, a colonial enterprise was driven by a mixture of statism and masochism, applied gropingly and in the songs to largely unexpected events. It was inclined to smash all forces standing in the way of its drive to inhibit their course toward all sorts of perverse pleasures. The limits to what it considered normal were constantly shifting, and few desires were subject to straightforward repression, let alone embarrassment or disgust. The colonial world's capacity to cope with the distraction of its objects, natives included, was astonishing. In Bembe, page 45-46, Achillean Bembe, like many African scholars, activists, and thinkers, 
look at the settler colonial setup in Palestine and see apartheid. But if so, it's apartheid with a difference. In South Africa, the system needed African labor to build its wealth. Israel doesn't need Palestinians. Mm. It seeks their land, making the people superfluous and therefore in a worse and weaker position. With love, uh, this is Mumia Abu Jamal. Speech commentary yep. recorded by Prison Radio. We are disposable. This next episode is Sekou Odinga, Soldier for Black Freedom Transitions, January 22nd. Sekou Odinga, Soldier for Black Freedom Transitions. His name was Sekou Odinga, a lifelong soldier for black liberation. When there arose a black freedom movement, he never hesitated to join in and add his life's energy to the struggle. In the 2020 book, Black Power Afterlives, Sekou and his partner, Dekui Kioni Siddiqui, wrote a moving self-history that gives us insights into these lives and freedom struggles. Sekou Ulingo wrote, I was a member of the Black Panther Party for Self-Defense, a Black Liberation Army soldier, and for 33 years, a U.S.-held political prisoner of war. Most of my adult life has been spent in the struggle for Black self-determination, Black revolutionary politics, and Black liberation. As such, my life speaks to the oft-heard expression. Oppression breeds resistance, and resistance breeds repression. My political consciousness began when I was a youthful offender at Comstock Correctional Facility in upstate New York with a good friend and close comrade, Lumumba Shakur. Lumumba's father, Haji Salahuddin Shakur, would send his son reading material on Malcolm X, his teachings, nationalist politics, the struggle for land and independence, and most pointedly, the human right black people must exercise to arm and defend themselves against violence, state or personal. Lumumba would share these materials with me. And after serving a three-year sentence, I was back on the street and seeking the Malcolm that had inspired me in prison. The words of Sekou Odinga from the book Black Power Afterlives, published by Haymark. Odinga would join the Organization of Afro-American Unity, or the OAAU, led by Malcolm. Yeah. But shortly thereafter, Malcolm would be assassinated. Odinga would lead the OAAU. In 1968, a delegation from Oakland, California, called the Black Panther Party, would be sent to New York to seek recruits Odinga and Lumumba Shakur joined immediately. The rest was history. In November 2014, Odinga made parole, and he and the Queen fought for black freedom for a decade. Sekou Odinga, 79, returns to the ancestors with love, not fear. This is Mumia Abu Jamal. These commentaries are recorded by Prison Radio.